What's up, YouTube? So Serum 2 is finally out. And today I want to do a quick explanation of the granular mode. It's one of my favorite new features in Serum 2. I don't want to do a kind of like all the new features kind of video because I'm sure there'll be a ton of those on YouTube already. I want to really hone in and kind of explain what each of the new features do in its own specific video so that you guys can really learn what's going on, right? Anyway, without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. <laughs> Okay, so one of the biggest new additions in Serum 2 is the new oscillator modes. So if you go over here at the top of the oscillator, you can see here it's this wavetable. We've got several different modes which we can set the oscillator to. And this is cool because it means we can kind of stack, you know, one granular oscillator with a wavetable, with a sample or multi-sample or something like that. Like I said, I'm going to avoid all of those in this video and kind of just focus on the granular mode because I love granular synthesis. It's one of my favorite ways of creating atmospheres and textures and stuff for my tracks. So what I want to do is I actually just want to go through what most of these parameters are doing because it might be confusing if you don't know what granular synthesis is doing or if you don't feel like reading the manual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by loading one of the factory sounds. We can actually just load up our own samples directly into the plugin like as always with Serum. But just to start things off, I just want to start with a piano sound because I think that this is going to be pretty easy to kind of understand what's happening in terms of the parameters of the sound because you obviously know what a piano sounds like, right? So what granular synthesis does is it essentially chops the sample up into hundreds of little pieces and each one is called a grain. Generally speaking with uh, granular synthesizers, you have several parameters as to how those grains are generated, whether it's panned left, right, uh, different lengths of the grain, different pitch of the grain. That's how you kind of create these textures or pads out of something like just a single sound, is you break that single sound up into tiny little micro sounds, and then you loop each part. So by default, the granular oscillator is set to one shot mode. Usually I prefer the loop modes, but there's several that we can choose from. So I'm just gonna go with the forward loop, and then what we can do is we can actually draw using these loop markers here, we can actually draw exactly where we want that kind of granular synth to grab sound from. And you see it kind of loops that part, right? So when each of the grains is generated in a granular synth, you generally have an envelope control over that grain, kind of like its own little synth voice, right? And you can actually open up this panel over here to have some control over what sort of envelope we want. You know, it's not quite as sort of in-depth as the traditional serum modulators, but it's enough, you know, just whether you want it to ramp up, whether you want it to be a kind of smooth triangle, or whether you want it to kind of ramp down like a plux. And we, have and we have several randomization options here, which is really cool. So we can randomize the shape of the grain every time that grain is generated. We have several different shapes here. So like whether you want a really sharp plucks, different types of uh, algorithms for shapes, basically. So sometimes we get clicks, right? And we have a crossfade option here, which basically just allows us to basically fade the edges. Okay, let's talk about these parameters here. So it's a little bit confusing at first because here we have these randomizations that are linked to these parameters here. So it's basically like the length of the grain 
and then how much the length is randomized each time that grain is generated, right? And it's the same here. We have the pan of the grains and then how much randomization is applied each time that grain is generated, right? So at first it's confusing because these are just parameters. It kind of feels like this is just the offset, but these three here are actually randomizations as well. So all of these six uh, knobs along the bottom here control the randomization of different parameters during the generation process. And the reason is obviously here we have pitch control. Uh, the direction is based on the scanning. The offset can also just be controlled by the loop points and stuff like that. So you don't necessarily need those parameters as well. So it's a pretty clever way of kind of condensing everything. What the direction does is it basically randomizes which direction the grain will play, whether it's playing forwards or backwards. The offset basically offsets where that grain is grabbing the bit of sound from. So it'll randomly take a piece from the beginning of the sample, from the middle of the sample, from the end, kind of like randomly scrubbing through the sample like that. Then we have the random pitch. I tend to not use this too much, maybe just like tiny little increments to almost create like a little bit of unison. But that can often create stuff that's like way too out of tune, you know? So it can be really cool for creating textures and glitchy effects. But for pads and atmospheres, I tend to only use this in really small increments. Random pan is really, really cool. Random length is really, really cool. And then random level as well. This is also a really cool way of like taking a sound that's, for example, like the piano middle C, and then creating like a more bassy pad out of something that's kind of mid and high frequency. Because of the way that granular works, when we pitch shift it, it doesn't time stretch the sound, right? Because it's grabbing those little chunks and the scanning option scans through those audio at the same time, the, the pitch bends in granular synthesis is far less obvious than something like in a traditional sampler or something like that. So we can create these really cool kind of deep pads out of a high frequency or, or mid-range sample, right? That's just me playing it a couple of octaves lower, by the way. So things really start to get interesting when we start to load up our own samples into the granular oscillator. I mean, there is some great factory content, obviously, um, but this is a really nice way of like resynthesizing stuff. Say, for example, you're working on a track and you have a bunch of sounds, but you need like an atmosphere and you're kind of feeling uninspired. What I generally like to do is just to kind of bounce a bunch of the sounds that exist in the project out already and then just load them into a granular synthesizer or something like that. So of course the project that I'm currently working on is just a blank project, so I don't have anything like that. But I actually do have a pack which I put out on my store not long ago called Fragments, which is a pack of granular sources. So they're basically wave samples, but they're designed for use with granular synthesizers. This one is a recording from a flute. <laughs> And so I've left all those parameters that we set up on the piano the same, and we can kind of just change the sample that's loaded in there for a different timbre, right? It's really, really cool. One thing to note, though, is that I believe that the factory content is kind of tuned to specific keys that work, right? Whereas some granular synthesizers allow you to choose the key of the sample when you're loading it in, um, and some rely on having to kind of detune it once you load the sample. So here, for example, if we load this sound that's a recording of something that's in D, and the root note of the patch is in C, we're going to have to kind of transpose to make up for that, right? Because if we look at... If we play a C and we look at a tuner, it's actually playing a D, 
So we can kind of counteract that by just turning the semitones down by the amount of semitones that D is up from the root note. So in this instance, it's two, and we can just look at the tuner. Cool, it's playing roughly C. And so, for example, if it's like a sound that's in G, we would have to turn it up five. Close-ish. Anyway, so let's go back to that original. This one sounded, that one sounded really good. I'm gonna go down an octave again. We can also just go down an octave here in the actual plugin. So the scan parameter basically determines like the speed at which that playhead scans through the sample. The density is the amount of grains that are generated at a time. So if we turn that to zero, there should be just, just the transient and then no sound. The higher you turn this though, the more you'll notice here in the bottom right, it increases the amount of voices. So of course, maxing this out, adding unison, and then playing a chord is going to really, really like affect your CPU. So keep that in mind. But most of the time I find myself just using somewhere between like one and 10 grains. I very rarely go above that. The length here is basically the length of each grain. So smaller values will create kind of glitchy textures where the sound kind of jumps around if you have high randomization. And then higher values tend to give you more of like an atmospheric pad type of vibe. That is so sick. Coming from Serum, I never expected this. Okay, so I wanna try something a little bit more experimental. There is a thing that we can do with granular synthesizers where let's set this to manual mode. And then what happens is it doesn't actually scrub the sample unless we scrub the position here. So that's a really cool way of creating like horror ambiences and textures by sort of modulating this and modulating the pitch as well. Uh, let's in fact just turn this down and up to an octave. That is sick. Okay, so what we can also do is at low lengths here. it starts to kind of tune itself. You can kind of hear it because it's repeating so fast. It's kind of in the audible range now. If we right click on this length parameter, there is a key track button. So there is actually no need to modulate or add any extra modulation sources. We're gonna just remove this, set this to key track, find that kind of middle C range, and then it should do the rest of the work for us. <laughs> 
Okay, that's close enough. Okay. Okay, that's on the C. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fine-tune it. So now, essentially, what we've created is kind of like a wavetable, but with a live kind of input that chops the audio sample. The concept, I guess, is kind of similar to something like the plugin I Wish, you know, where you send it an audio file and it, it chops the audio kind of key tracks. Do you know what I mean? Let's set this to 56. That's cool. Okay, so let's mono legato, give it a bit of glide. And now if we s scrub the sample, like with a position, it can give us like a different timbre. So this technique is particularly cool for sounds that are maybe percussive or very transient that don't have a tone and you're trying to create a synth that kind of has a tone out of that. So this is basically like a sample with just a bunch of like glitch sounds. So we also have the traditional Serum Warp Modes, which we can apply to the granular. And in Serum 2, they've actually added, so there's two Warp Modes now, and a bunch of new ones that they've added as well. So we've got like distortions and all sorts of stuff which we can add on, kind of like um, spectral clipping. And we can also FM stuff to and from the granular. So I'm just going to load up the traditional wavetable. I'm going to put in a sinish wave. And we're going to get some FM from that sign into the granular. That is absolutely insane, what you can do with just the oscillator. Remember, there's very minimal, I mean, here in this example, no effects. Only in that previous example, we put a little bit of convolution reverb, but other than that, this is just raw, straight out of the oscillator. Incredible, incredible. This, as, as with Serum 1, Serum 2 is definitely setting a new precedent for plugins, in my opinion. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments, and there will definitely be more Serum 2 content. You don't even have to worry about that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Cheers.